This is going to be section 12.2, and this is going to be related to a concept that we looked at in chemistry. So some of this is going to look familiar, but now we're going to look at it in uh, a new perspective. So if you remember, we did a couple of labs, and we were trying to graph the um, temperature over time. And we were going from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. I'd like you to take a significant portion of your paper and we're gonna recreate that graph. So on the x-axis, we're gonna have time and we're gonna be having temperature. So remember in our first lab, we were taking a solid and when you heat up a solid, it's going to increase in temperature. And then something interesting happens is it begins to melt. But the temperature no longer increases. And it kind of flatlines like this for a while. And at this point right here, all of the solid is completely melted. And then it shoots up in temperature again. And then we now have a liquid. And the liquid begins to increase its temperature. And then the temperature ceases increasing, and it flatlines again while the material is boiling. So for example, if this is water, um, we would be heating ice, heating ice, heating ice until it reaches zero, and then it starts to melt. Now we have ice water, and then once all the ice melts, then we have water, the temperature of the water begins to increase, then it starts to boil, and the boiling point of water cannot exceed 100 degrees Celsius at normal pressure, and so it stays at 100 degrees until all the material boils off. So here we have the solid phase. Here we have the solid and the liquid phase. Here we have the liquid phase. And here we have a liquid in the gas phase. So if you can draw these dotted lines to show these different regions, like this and like this. So what's happening is the temperature begins to increase for the solid because as you add energy, those particles are going to begin to shake faster. So you increase the kinetic energy, and therefore it increases the temperature. There's more energy of the particles. So they begin shaking, 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 but then finally here, uh, it starts to melt. And all of the heat goes into melting. So as we continue the time, notice there's no temperature increase. There's no increase in temperature here. That's because, well, what's happening here? We have both solid and, and liquid. Instead of increasing the molecular motion of the liquid, we are trying to melt all of the solid. So at this point in time, all of the heat energy goes into the melting. That's what we discussed in, in chemistry. Then all of your ice melts here, and it begins to increase in temperature again. Similar process, we're increasing the kinetic energy. Now that we only have the liquid phase, those particles start to spin faster and faster and faster. Therefore, we increase the temperature. But then we are starting to boil here. And instead of increasing the molecular motion of the liquid, all of the um, energy is going into making it into a gas. So all of the heat goes into the boiling process. So there's two names for these. And the Q for the, the heat right here, this is called the heat of fusion. And the heat of fusion has a symbol. It's an H sub F. This heat over here is called the heat of vaporization.
and it's symbolized with an H V. So a lot of heat goes into just the melting process, and a lot of heat goes into this process of, of boiling. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where it gets a little bit mathematical, and I'm going to need the whole second page of, of this. Imagine that you have some snow. There's no snow on the ground right now, but we just have to imagine this. Imagine that we have a mass of 1.5 kilograms of snow. The initial temperature of the snow is minus 20 degrees Celsius. We are going to melt the snow and we're going to be getting it to 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be using a similar formula which is going to be for the heat. Remember, heat is equal to, it's the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. However, we have the same mass during this um, process. However, we do not have the same specific heat because we're starting off with snow and we're going into water. So the specific heat of water, as we discussed, is 4180. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to leave out the units because this can get a little bit nasty. And we have the specific heat of ice, which is 2060. This is the joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So to calculate how much heat it's going to take to get the snow from this temperature to this temperature, we actually have to do three problems. We have to take the snow from minus 20 to zero degrees Celsius. And then we have to take that from zero degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. So <clears throat> we have two problems. But in addition to that, this is the energy that's going to be increasing the temperature. Here's the energy that's going to be increasing the temperature right here. So we're taking the snow and we're melting it, and we're increasing the temperature. Then we're taking the water, and we're also increasing the temperature. But we also have to take into consideration all the heat that goes into melting. This is going to be the heat of fusion. So the total heat has those three parts. We need to calculate the heating up of the ice, which is from here to here. We then have to calculate the heat of fusion, which is this right here. And then we also have to calculate the heat that goes into heating the water from 0 to 20. This is the Q of the water. So the formula would look like this. We have, again, the mass specific heat times the change in temperature. So we have the mass of ice, the specific heat of ice, times the temperature change of the ice, plus, and here is the formula for the heat of, of fusion. The heat of fusion is equal to the mass times the heat of fusion. I'll give you that um, value. This actually is a constant for uh, ice, and I'll give that to you so you can do your homework problems. And then to this, we're also going to be doing the mass of the water, just say W, times the specific heat of water times the uh, temperature change of the water. So let's do these three problems. We're going one, two, three, and because of the space limitation, I'm going to be doing them one on top of the other. Okay, so we're doing this one here, and then this one there, and this one over here. So we're going to be doing the first one. 
So the first one's gonna be equal to the mass of our snow is gonna be uh, 1.5 kilograms. And we multiply this by the specific heat of ice, which is 2060. And the temperature change, it's the T2 minus the T1. So here's our T2 and here's the T1. Here's the T2, here's the T1. So our T2 is gonna be zero minus the T1, which is a negative 20. Okay, we've got a second problem, which is the heat of fusion. The mass, again, is 1.5 kilograms. And the constant for the heat of fusion of this material, which is the water, is 3.31 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. Okay, we'll calculate that. Then the last one's going to be the mass of the water, 1.5 kilograms. The specific heat of water, which is 4180. And then I'm going to the temperature change, which is the T2 minus the T1. So in this case, I have 20 minus 0 equals this. This actually came out to be plus a positive, so it's going to be a, a, a positive. If you plug it in your calculator, this comes out to be 61,800 joules. The heat of fusion comes out to be 496,500 joules. And then this comes out to be 125,400 joules. So the total joules comes out to be 683,700. And um, we're going to do this to two significant digits, so that would be 680,000 joules. But take a look at this and the amount of energy. The amount of energy to heat it from minus 20 to 0 is this. Okay, It takes more energy to heat it from 0 to 20 when it's in the water state, probably due to the hydrogen bonding. But look at how much energy that it takes just to melt the ice. It's the majority of the energy in this problem, and it's just melting it. So there's going to be a problem that's going to be similar to this. And um, it's going to be something like if you're going to be going from minus 20 degrees Celsius, again, we're starting off as snow, but we're going up to 120 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go from minus 20 to 0, plus the heat of fusion, from 0 to 100, and then to that we're going to be adding the heat of vaporization, which is right here, and then to that we're going to be adding the um, going from 100 to 120. So to do that, to do the Q total, you're going to need to calculate the heat of the ice plus the heat of fusion as we did, plus the heat to um, heat the water. The ice is going from 1 minus 20 to 0. This is going from 0 to 100. Then we're going to have the heat of vaporization plus the heat to heat the steam from zero, I'm sorry, 100 to 120. So what you need to know, you already have this, you need to get the heat of vaporization and the heat of vaporization and this is going to be the mass times the heat of vaporization, just like it is. So the heat of vaporization is going to be equal to 2.26 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. That's the amount of energy is needed to heat every kilogram of material. So you, the heat of vaporization 
um, is going to be this constant times whatever mass that you're using. And then you're going to have to um, use the um, specific heat for steam, which I don't know if I have. Hold on. <laughs> 